Greetings, Earth enthusiasts. If you ever wondered about the incredible perspectives our planet has to offer from high above here in the right place, I am Dr. Klaar Kutsi, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this captivating journey into the world of remote sensing. Welcome. And please remember to like, subscribe to, and share this video. Thank you. In the previous video tutorial, we explored a couple of databases that specifically focus on urban settlements, urban footprint, uh, build structures, build up structures, build up places, etc. etc. So, the idea of those data sets is to give an intuitive spatial indication of where um, people are located, where uh, urban areas are located within your region of interest so that's what we're focusing on at, at the moment is to get an understanding from from using remote sensing of urban areas uh, whether it be formal urban areas informal urban areas small urban areas large urban areas doesn't matter where there's an urban footprint and we in our previous video tutorial focused on three uh, data sets two of them are from the same source um, that tried uh, that actually you know displayed where these urban areas are located, and then I refer to a fourth um, data set. Now uh, in Google Earth, it, there's two methods of accessing that fourth data set, so you can classify either as a fourth or a fifth data set. Nonetheless, we're gonna in this video tutorial focus specifically on the open buildings data set. I prefer to work with this data set because uh, it's, uh, it's the data set that, that aligns closest to what I'm requiring from urban footprint data sets. The other three uh, data sets are, are neat, they are good, they are what they say they are, but um, for my specific needs, uh, the open uh, data set, the open buildings data set is by far the, the best one. And I'll show you the reasons for that now. Okay, so remember we've got our our um, project open um, and we have loaded our scripts for the first three data sets, um, which is this particular one, which focus on uh, six bands or six categories in the bands for urban structures, whether it's old, newer, newer, etc. etc. Again, go and have a look at for that. For this is the one where it tries to um, give an estimate or a, um, a forecast of um, future urban areas or urbanizations, more specifically. We'll see, I've called it urbanization, and it's um, yeah, and then um, this the the footprint settlement world settlement footprint, um, but again this is for 2015, which is quite a bit old, and therefore, mm, but it's good for historical context nonetheless. Okay, so the ones that we're going to focus is the open buildings um, data set. Now within Earth Engine, um, there's two methods of accessing that specific data set. You've got this particular, um, sorry, this particular. Um, ID or identifier to access that specific uh, building's data set, or you can access it via this specific uh, unique identifier. So it's the same data set, just two different ways of accessing it and displaying the data set. So again, that comes back to whether it's four or five data sets. So it's okay. So let's assume it's it's five data sets because it's got uh, unique identifiers and unique ways of presenting the data and uh, downloading the data. Okay, so as I said, um, this open buildings data set um, is fairly recently uploaded within the Earth Engine catalog. Um, I still, to a large degree, prefer to access the data from it, the website itself, from the open buildings website itself. Um, and, and possibly then bringing it into Earth Engine. However, this is a, another method where you can display it here. Now, downloading it is a little bit more tricky, but displaying it within your map is, is fairly straightforward, as was the case with all these other uh, data sets. We, we're going to go for it. But let's first spend a bit of time on, on the website itself. So there's the, the URL for the Open Buildings uh, website. Or you can just go to Google um, search and 
um, enter open buildings and search for the website and this is the landing page of the website now familiar yourselves with all the different ins and outs of the data set itself because if you don't understand the data set how are you going to be able to use it and interpret it and analyze it and all these things so make sure you understand what is captured within the data set there's the brief description of it uh, what the data can be used for and this ultimately is what the data set will look like when you import it or when you download it and import it either in Earth Engine or in, let's say, QGIS, for example. And basically, it digitizes each and every single, or it attempts to digitize each and every single urban structure. For example, a house uh, or um, a garage or a uh, outhouse or a factory or a mine or a shed, whatever the case might be, where there's a built-up structure a brick cement structure or steel structure. Um, it's trying to first identify the, that structure um, and then it tries to digitize it. Okay, and so it will digitize it in the shape of a polygon, either a square or a rectangle or whatever the, 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 the shape of the structure is. But in most cases, it's some um, uh, uh, polygon um, and obviously it will also capture therefore the size of that structure whether it's a small house a large house a big warehouse a small little cafe shop uh, whatever the case might be whatever that feature is that built up feature is or that structure is that it's trying to um, digitize and it will display it in three different colors and again you can choose the colors but in general it's green orange and red now the green indicates as it is labeled here indicates high confidence of that structure meaning they're fairly confident that that, that, that is a built-up structure and they've digitized it correctly 75 percent and then the orange is between 75 uh, 70 and 75 percent and the red is between 65 and 70 percent so the red is the lowest confidence that that's actually a structure and the um, orange is sort of midway and green is the highest. Now, what's interesting, again, if you look at this map, you'll see that the bigger the structure is, the higher the confidence, the lower, the smaller the structure is, the lesser the confidence. And that makes sense because it's more tricky to identify a small structure than a big structure. Um, so that makes obvious sense and it's up to you to, uh, to, de to decide whether you want to include the low confidence structures uh, in your analysis or you simply want to exclu exclude it. The other important thing is obviously um, the size of the structures. Now, if the structure is two square meters, um, it's most probably just a, a little a small shed. And therefore, you can simply just ignore it. So small structures. Um, could be ignored for two reasons one it's small and therefore it's not really of any significance and the second reason is because there's a low confidence that it is actually a structure so you can actually also delete it or exclude it from your analysis on that basis but that's again up to you so this is something this is how you will uh, find the data um, and the data will be exported in a csv file for you to convert an excel file and then you can um, either bring it back into uh, your QGIS or Earth Engine as a, as a polygon or you can convert it to raster or whatever, that's up to you. Okay, so go through the details of the content or the narratives or the ins and outs of the data set um, just to familiarize yourself with the ins and outs. Okay, so the mo more important thing is well, how do you download the data? Okay. Uh, how do you go? And there's a section where you can actually download. There's a download format. Okay. So this is what the data will download as. The data, each structure, remember each and every single structure, whether it's one square meter or a thousand square meters, doesn't matter. Each structure that it had identified and it digitized will have a Latin along, meaning a centroid for that specific structure. It will have the area in meters, the confidence, and then it will have the polygon details okay so you can as i said then include it in your gis either based on its centroid or you can include it based on its geometry that's again up to you these are the two criteria that i've specifically looked at and again that's up to you i in general 
the lead, all the, um, set the, uh, the, the structures that's less than, let's say, 10 square kilometers, because there's no point of it. It's normally a garage or a little outhouse or something to that effect. So I typically delete it. And again, um, and then obviously with the ones at 65%, I normally ref, um, require 70% antibody. And the reason also why I do that, you um, are not cluttering your data set uh, because these things are very, very big. So you, and it takes them, the more of these structures is included, um, the bigger your data set, the longer it work, takes to work, you get shutdowns and all these sort of things, uh, timeouts and all these things. So, um, so I normally clean up the data set so that it includes certain uh, or uh, excludes certain uh, structures. Okay, so you can go to the download function. There is a download function. As I said, the data is extremely big. Okay, you can see there in size. Um, so you can't download the whole thing. It's never going to work. So they give you different options. So in one of these, they actually have these little cell grids or grids. Grid, um, and you can then choose to download everything within that grid. Okay, so... But again, you see, if I click on this one here, you'll see this, it's quite big. And this is a zipped file. Uh, it's 1.2 gig. So first of all, it will download long. Second of all, when you open it in Excel, it's going to give you plenty of nightmare uh, to work with. It's, it's going to be slow. It's going to shut down. It's going to just give it, it's going to crash, etc. Et uh, if you have a strong enough computer um, that can handle these sort of sizes, go for it. Um, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. But that's an option for you. If all else fails, do this, but be prepared to be frustrated uh, because it's very, very big. You're looking at a couple of hundred thousand of structures in each of these ones. You can see it's quite big. So this would be the one that I would be, um, that would be a bit smaller, 56, but still that zip. If I unzip it, I still have to exclude all those um structures that's not within my region of interest but anyway, so that's one way of doing it but the one that i want to actually go to is the collab uh, uh notebook that's the one that i prefer to use because here you can specify your region of interest much more accurately than just choosing an arbitrary area and you know your, your site will be lost in that uh, data set your region of interest. Okay, so you left click on it. Okay, left click. And it will open uh, its landing page. And there's just two things that you have to do here. Okay, the rest you leave exactly. You don't hana hana with it. You don't change anything. You leave it as it's. Don't worry about Ghana and all these other things. You leave it as it's. You got two things to do. You must import your polygon details in here. This is where it says your own. WKT polygon. So you have to add the details here. That's first one, and then you're going to press run. So that's the two things. Step one, uh, you have to generate your region of interest and find its WKT polygon. Now that's just a, a specific layout of your polygon um, uh, coordinates. That's basically what it basically means. Then you press run. It will run. Once it's run, or uh, uh, the code is finished, then you basically just uh, upload your, uh, you press this little button here and you upload it to your Google folder. So there's three things that you have to do. That's it. The polygon details here in that specific format, you press run. Once it's done, it will tell you a little tick here, which says it's all done. Then you just basically click on this one to download it. And, you, and it will be a click, there will be a link, and it pops your uncle. Okay, so how do I generate my region of interest polygon, a WKT polygon features? Because this is what I need. Now, you could use this tool. Okay, so you just right, right uh, left, uh, left click on it. It will open up. It will give you an option to go there. But for whatever reason, mine is not, doesn't want to work. Okay, but this is an option. And then you'll just create your um, region of interest there, and you will say map it, and then you just copy and paste it. 
Okay, so the details will dis display in here, and you just simply copy and paste it, okay, into into this. Okay, but for whatever reason, my doesn't want to work. Uh, okay, so second option. No, not all, yeah, so second option, you open QGIS. Okay, a blank QGIS, or if you have ArcGIS or whatever the case, you just open your GIS. Okay, so a couple of steps here. First of all, I open my OSM uh, map. So there is, you go to web, you go to map quick service, there's your OSM. Okay, OSM standard. So that's your first step once you've opened um, QGIS. Okay, straightforward. Um, if you don't have it, uh, your OM, your quick map services, go to um, your plugins, manage plugins, and you go to all and you just say quick. Um, there's your quick map services and there's your quick OSM. Okay, so make sure those two plugins are installed. Okay, so you just go to plugins and just go for quick or for OSM and it will be there okay so just remember that's how you access it okay so you go to web to web you go to quick map service and you go to osm and you open your osm there's your standard you zoom into roughly your region of interest this is my region of interest plus minus now if you have a, a shape file you can overlay it that is perfect because then you can generate your your um, polygon around your uh, region of interest already. I haven't brought it in. I've got a rough idea what it is, so um, no need to do that. So I'm going to go then to layer. I'm going to create layer and I'm going to create a temporary scratch layer. Okay. So that's what we're going to create. Because uh, we're only interested in the features, the polygon features. We're not interested in anything else. So we just create this. So we go to temporary, you left click. And you just give it, um, yeah, leave it as is. You can change the name. That's up to you. Um, and we're going to do a polygon. Okay, so polygon. So that's the only two things. Leave all the rest exactly the same and press. Okay. Now you'll see the option to draw your polygon as opened up. Okay. So we're going to use this one, yeah, um, to draw the polygon, add polygon feature. Okay. So we're going to click on that. Uh, and... And you'll see the cursor will change into that little targeting. And you just basically left click all your different, um, your region of interest. Make sure you cover all your, your region of interest. And when you're in the last one, you simply just right click. Okay. So left click on to draw and right click to finish it. And we click, we're going to save it. Clicking on this one here, this little pencil here, and we save it. Now it's temporarily saved. Okay, so now there's my region of interest. Okay, so now I want to get to its features. So I'm going to click on the information button here. Okay. Information button. And I left click on my um, polygon, my region of interest. You'll see on the, a new um, layer, of, um, a layer will open here, a layers panel or panel will open on your right hand side with the details of your polygon or your region of interest. You go to derived and you'll see there's feature ID. So you highlight the feature ID. Once it's highlighted, you right click and you say copy features. Okay, so there's my, and I copy the features. Okay, I'll go through it again. Now the features are copied. I go to my my um, software, my program. I right click and I say paste. And there is my features of my region of interest pasted within my program. Okay. And you'll see these numbers are all coordinates for each and every single place where I um, draw my uh, region of interest. Okay, so there's my polygon pasted within my color program. Okay. And then I simply just click run. Okay. So I left click, I paste it in here, and then I click run. You'll see it will, there's all sorts of things that will now be displayed here. Don't stress about it. You just be a passenger now. And it will give you the percentage that it's now generating. Okay, so you just 
Hang on. So while this is going on, let's go back to QGIS. Let's quickly close it. And let's delete this one and redo it. Remove the layer. Get it removed. Remember, I open the or I um, enable the OSM map and I uh, zoom into my region of interest. I go to layer. I go to create layer. I go specifically to temporary scratch layer. I leave it. I just give, say, I want to do a polygon and I press OK. Okay, so if you want to do multiple polygons or multiple lines or multiple points, that's up to you. I'm not interested in all that. That's just interesting in the polygon, but you can do that. And you press OK, so polygon, and I press OK. So now I've said to QGIS, I want to create this polygon. Now I have to go and draw the polygon. You'll see it's activated. This little pencil is now activated, meaning I can draw it. And this is my draw function, this drawing. And I just left click. And once I've done with it, I right click and that will close the polygon and now I'm active. And then you just save it by toggling the editing um, tab here. I'm closing the editing function and I save it. Now it's done. So now I go to my features um, identification button here and I left click on it. And now it's active. You'll see now this panel has opened. I go to feature ID. Uh, left click on it to, act to activate it, then I right click on it and I say copy features. And just to show you in a Word document, just for intersect, this is how it looks like. It says WKT, geometry, polygon, and there's the feature. And this is what you're going to paste within the Colop software. Okay, I hope that that helps you. Okay, you'll see it's done. It's there's your little tick, it's all done. It says it's 100% done, all good. Now you simply just go to go down, you scroll down until you find the next little run icon, which is download results. Well, I want to go the first one, uh, uh, upload to my Google Drive. Okay, remember, upload to your Google Drive, you just click on that, and it will also now start um, running. Okay, you'll see it will give you upload to Google Drive, it's done. Quick, quick. Okay, it's a right tick, it's uploaded. There's your link you just left click on the link and it will open in your google drive now in your google drive i'm just gonna download it here quickly just to show you so on google drive i just download it i'm somewhere gonna download it to my desktop uh, is it taking so long uh, there we go i'm just gonna download it to my desktop and let's wait until it's Okay, it's downloaded. There it is. I'm going to unzip it. And you see there it is in a CSV file. Now, if I open the CSV file, if I open the CSV file, you'll see it. Now I have to condense it. See, it's now in CSV. Now I have to convert it into Excel. So I select the data and then I go to data. And I go to text to columns. Go okay, text to columns. I'm going to delimit it. It's comma. So I'm going to separate by comma. You see there it is. Some, and I just go finish. And there it is. Let's just quickly make it a little bit bigger. So that you can see it nicely. Okay. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. You can see there's the lat, the long. There's the area in meters, so this first one at that wood, that centroid is 26 square meters, and the confidence is 81. So they're fairly confident, and there's the polygon for that. Okay, so let's quickly just say, I'm going to just quickly sort it, uh, filter, and I'm going to sort it by, let's say, size. And we're going to go A to Z. You'll see the short, smallest are 10 square meters. I'm not sure. Yeah, so smallest are 10 square meters. Now, um, it's sorting it. Okay. In my case, I have to convert this, the points into commas. Because it's seeing this now as text. So let's just format. Oh, sorry, I'm going to go 
um, home. I'm going to go find. I'm going to go find what that, and I'm going to replace it by a comma. And here we go. Okay, and you said to align it again. Sm smallest. You see, there's the smallest is two square meters, two point five square meters. And so let's see how many there are. There are sixty-five thousand, and the largest is thirteen thousand square meters, which is very large. And again, you can see the relationship between the large ones being very close to hundred percent. You can see that, and you can see the small ones being under six and a very low scale of uh, confidence levels, which is basically what I said. And I said. A two square meter one is most probably just a glorified toilet outside or something to that effect. So um, we can delete it itself, no purpose. Uh, most probably something, you know, sticking out of house or something to that effect. But anyway, just to go, we can actually obviously go and plot this one to see whether it's sufficient to um, exclude it from your analysis or not. But anyway, there it is. Now you can save it as Excel. Remember, keep it as a CSV file because um, you can now upload it back into your uh, QGIS, for example. Anyway, and there you have it for further work in QGIS in terms of mapping these ones, identifying where the big structures are, where the small structures are, creating heat maps. And then if you have a DEM and you've got this, you can actually generate the height of these structures. So, but there's things that we can still do in the future. So that's one way of generating the result, then generating the data. You use the COBA function. And as I said, there's three steps. You generate your polygon um, coordinates uh, in WKT format using QGIS. You run it. Once it's run, so it's complete, then you just download it to your Google Drive. And that's it. Straightforward as that. Okay. Or... If you don't want to do that, uh, for whatever reason, you can just simply go to Earth Engine and use Earth Engine to generate it. Okay, so first option of generating is using this ident project identifier, okay, which is the open data set, MS Buildings, and I downloaded it for South Africa, and then I clip it for my region of interest. And the... Uh, and I then uh, add it to my um, my layers, and I call it buildings. And there's my export option. So see, let's see how that looks. There's my buildings. Let's quickly just do that. And that should be exactly the same as that spreadsheet. You can see there. Um, big difference. Yeah, just quickly see there is. Let's open the map here. You can it's overlaid with a map. Okay, so let's drill in. You can see there's the latest Google Earth map, and you can see it digitized each and every single building uh, in black. You can see here. Let's just, you can see there's the building, and it is just there. You see there's the garage. There's that small little thing. Let's drill it in. This is most probably a little shed or something to that effect. Um, that it has digitized. You see that, that it has digitized. If it's one structure like this, it will digitize the old structure. But if it's a separate structure, so in this particular earth, there's three structures. There's this little thing here. This is most probably a garage, and this is the primary residence. You can see it will digitize it. Now, obviously, there's some that it misses. You see this one, it has missed. This structure here is not digitized as at all. This one is a little bit um, not proper. You see, this one is also not digitized. You can see there. Not digitized. This one here is as well not digitized. That could be because of the data set. There's been new properties. And therefore, the data set has not yet been updated to digitize um, these, these new buildings. But you can see they are in the minority. Okay. Because I think it's about a year or two years old, this data set. So in terms of the older buildings, it will for sure pick them up. Newer buildings, um, you most probably will wait for um, the updates. You can see it has digitized. This is a school. This is a big garage. Um, this is um, um, 
hostels, little apartment buildings. You see it has some digitized, but this is new. It's very, very new. But you can see this is the old part of the town and it's been properly digitized. Okay, so if we compare that, let's say, with the human settlements areas, you see the human settlements area will just indicate whether there's something or nothing. Same with urbanization, where there's something or nothing. So same with the build-up. It doesn't actually indicate these builders. And you see the neat feature of this is you can get the sizes. And you can see which are big buildings. And that obviously allows you to differentiate between small houses, medium houses, large residential, uh, industrial, retail, etc., etc. You can make some broad assumptions on the sizes. And therefore, you can divide it there. So you can see it's very, very neat. And obviously, this is exactly what you're going to get with that spreadsheet um, that we just downloaded from its website. If you import it again, this is how it will look. Okay. And as I said, we will uh, download it. And in the download, it will obviously tell you the size and the confidence levels. Okay. So that's another way of doing it is going this specific route. Okay, so going that unique identifier, open bowling version one. In fact, there's, a, I think, a version three now. Let's quickly see if there's a version. If I can um, download version version three. I think the version three is the latest version. Let's go to the website quickly and see, yes, see there's version three. Yeah, there's version three. Version three is from May 2023. But whether it's updated for your region of interest is a, is a, is a, uh, uh, is a bit unknown. We'll, that, we'll have to go and have a look and see. Okay, so let's quickly just unselect that. So that's, um, so in here you can actually filter it for the confidence levels. You see, there we filter. Here you don't filter for the confidences. You just indicate this building um, and basically that. Here you actually... Um, generate the script where you say okay display it in the color schemes meaning in the confidence levels okay and that's basically what this basically means and um, there we go so let's go to this our area here satellites let's and then unselect the region of interest let's zoom in again okay so you'll see there's the yellows Let's have a look and see the area that we just looked at now. Okay, you'll see there. There's the greens. Remember, the green is high confidence. Yellow is medium confidence. Red is low confidence. And again, you see the uh, green. Let's have a look and see if version 3 covers these three. Remember, it wasn't. Yep, it does. It wasn't perfectly captured by. We just go with the buildings one. You can see there. Uh, remember in the building one, that was probably version 1 still. It doesn't capture these new apartments. They capture the hospital, this hospital there. But it doesn't capture these apartments. The latest version uh, seemed to capture them. Yeah, so the latest version seemed to capture them. Again, remember, uh, green is uh, high confidence, and then this yellow is low confidence. You'll see that you know, exactly what. What, let's have a look and see if we take that out. That was probably a shed. This is the end here. This was probably a little shed or something. That it's captured there at a uh, 65 to 60% CD. That's what I'm saying. Most probably you can leave this and just fo focus on the green. Uh, because the green are what we're interested uh, um, Yeah. Unfortunately or fortunately, this you cannot download. Um, this you cannot download. You can only download it as the database as a whole. You cannot download it in this format. This format is purely for displaying in Google Earth Engine, but you cannot download this. This you can download, but and then obviously you can display it in the colors, etc., etc., in your uh, let's say QJS or whatever you want to use it. Um, but it gives you an indication. Obviously, now what you can do is you can obviously identify buildings or locations where it hasn't been digitized, hasn't been updated, and you can update it yourself. 
because that should be a vast minority of structures. Let's have a look at this, because this is fairly new area. Let's have a look here. This is a, a fairly new informal settlement, mostly small buildings. Okay, so it does capture some of the, the newer buildings, but there's still quite a bit that it's not properly captured. Uh, you can see this. Okay, so it's capturing some of these buildings, but not all of them. Let's have a look at this one here. See if that one is capturing it. You see that one is not capturing it as much as the updated version. Version 3 captures more. But anyway, these are very, very new. That's been there for about the last year or so. But you can obviously now end, um, add this to the data set. You can uh, generate these undigitized images or um, build up structures. You can digitize it yourself within QGIS, for example. But this, if you look at the overall picture, it will give you, I think, basically a 95% accuracy number in terms of the buildings. And I said the beauty of this is it will give you the sizes of the buildings. Now, as I said, what we can do, and we'll do it in a follow-up, is that we can use the digital surface model and actually generate the height of the buildings. So whether it is a three-story, a four-story, five-story apartment or whatever. So this is giving you very much a two-dimensional uh, height of the length and the width. And then to get to the three-dimensional, we need the height. And the height we can generate from the digital surface model. Um, so that's obviously now possible. And the beauty of this is you can now overlay this with your population data, for example, and generate how many people per building. Or you can generate it, uh, overlay it with your night lights to see the uh, income or the GDP per uh, structure. So there's a lot we can do with this data. You can generate heat maps for this, etc. And I said you can cluster it around um, arbitrary classifications, small buildings or small residential, medium residential, etc. Et so there's a huge amount of data, things that you can do with this data set. Um, and I said, you can either download it straight from here, um, use the Earth Engine to download it and display it, or you can simply go to its landing page, the open data, uh, open da uh, buildings data, uh, the landing page, and, gener and download it from there, which I prefer to do. Okay, so, yeah, so that's number four. Five slash four or five, um, and you can see how scattered um, the just as a summary, how scattered the structures are. Okay, so it's not just capturing urban towns, uh, but it's also ca capturing um, farm structures. So you can identify farm places. Let's have a look at there. There's a little farm place here, um, farm set up here. So it identifies that as well. So all urban structures. So that's quite neat. Huh? Very, very neat little database that you can that you can use and play with. There's a lot you can do with this database. Not on its own per se, but as I said, um, generating uh, statistics regarding population densities and so forth and so forth. There's a lot you can do with this. Very, very, very nice data set. Okay, remember to save. So that's version 3, not version 1. Okay. So let me let me um, conclude with this data set for now and this visualization picture for now in terms of our urban structures or built up areas or built up structures. And uh, thanks for joining me on this uh, this particular journey, journey into remote sensing. We're exploring um, hopefully new and exciting uh, galaxies. Uh, places, information that hopefully will help you in whatever you are busy or uh, planning to do. Please stay tuned. Please remember to like and subscribe and um, share this video. And again, thanks for joining me um, on this journey of remote sensing. And I'll see you on the other side.